Hi folks, this is Don. I want to go over a problem that you will see uh, on the uh, something like this on the final exam and quizzes uh, out of chapter 8. But let's look at it and see if we can tell what kind of test we need to run. The problem says the, an engineer wants to know if producing metal bars using a new treatment rather than the old treatment makes a difference in tensile strength. That's how strong they are if you pull on them. At alpha equal 0 0.01, answer a number of questions. They want to know what the claim and the null and the alternative are. They want to know the critical value and for you to identify the rejection regions. They want to know the standardized test statistic and then they want you to decide to uh, reject or fail to reject the null and then interpret that decision. Five things. So let's um, look at this again in a little more detail. Uh, the engineer wants to know if it makes a difference. Now this is poor wording in this problem so it's a little bit fuzzy but I would take it to mean that the engineer thinks that it does make a difference. So that would be the claim that there is a difference in the results of the new treatment and the old treatment. He doesn't say whether he thinks the tensile strength will increase or if it will decrease. So it could be either one. So that tells me that this is a two-tailed test and that the claim is that the difference in the means, we have a table of data here, and of readings for the seven tests of the experimental and seven tests to breakage of the conventional and that if we calculate the means of these tests and then subtract them, compare them, we'll find that there is a difference that the um, mean of the experimental minus the mean of the conventional, mu1 minus mu2, is not equal to zero. It's different. He doesn't care whether it's greater or lesser, just that it's different. Because the claim is that it makes a difference, that's a not equal operator. Not equal operators always go in the alternative. That makes the alternative the claim. And the null is the complement, which would be an equality of zero. Again, that, that fits. Nulls always have an equality. Since the alternative contains the not equal, that's a two-tailed test. And since the variances are equal, we know we must pool the variance to find the standard error. So this tells me we're going to use uh, either a Z or a T test. Um, because we have so few data points, 7 and 10, that tells me that this should be a T test rather than a Z test. Remember, if we have an N more than 30, <clears throat> and we know the standard deviations. Here we do not know the standard deviations. We're told to assume the variances are equal, which implies that the standard deviations are equal, but we don't know what they are. So that makes us do a t-test. So uh, the first thing I like to do is to draw a sketch, and I'm lazy, so I use the uh, StatCrunch calculator just to do this part. Uh, I go to the t-calculator, and I put in the degrees of freedom. Remember the degrees of freedom for a t-test in which the variances are equal is equal to the sum of the n's. That would be 7 plus 10 or 17 minus 2 would be 15 for our degrees of freedom. I put that in. Our alpha is 0 0.01. That means that alpha over 2 is in each tail. That'd be 0 0.005 in each tail. And then 1 minus alpha, or 0 0.99, is in between under the curve. And in this case, it's red. And uh, that is the good area, fail to reject area. The white little areas down here are the rejection zones. And the calculator gives us the critical values of minus 2.947 and plus 2.947. All right, okay, let's get the data into Excel. And we have so little here, you just copy it and you know, type it in. But you remember, you can click on the little icon here 
and double click on it actually and it will download a Excel uh, workbook that has the data and this is what the spreadsheet looks like when it comes up we've got our values for our experimental treatment in column A conventional treatment in column B our seven values of experimental ten values of the treatment let's use the data analysis two sample of some equal variances and we get this dialog box first thing we have to do is put in our data sample one and sample two they call them variables I'm going to click on the little red arrow there select the label and drag down to select all the cells that have data don't select cells that don't have data click on the little red arrow to insert it do that again for the conventional make sure we get all the values there insert our hypothesized main difference zero our labels are in the first row we're going to click that our alpha is 0 0.01 I want to select an output range so put it on this page click that little red arrow we'll go here to a14 good now let's double check we got our sample one range or sample two range size mean alpha 0.01 and an output range so we'll click OK and we get this output we get our means our variances counts pool variances that is uh, a little bit complicated to calculate but it does it for you there's our degrees of freedom that we said 15 again we get a t test statistic of minus 0.229 we get a two tail remember we were interested in the two tail we don't need to use this one tail data the critical value for the two tail is 2.947 it only gives you the positive but remember for a two tail you have the both of them the plus and minus and our T stat doesn't fall outside of minus 2.947 or outside of plus 2.947 it doesn't go into those tails that we saw so that tells us fail to reject but we also get a two-tail probability of 0.82 which is much much greater than the alpha of 0.01 so again we failed to reject okay I'm gonna take a few more minutes and show you how to do this using pH stat if you have it and I would recommend you're getting it if you can we want to select two sample tests unsummarized data and we want pool variances because we've got equal variances and we get another dialog box the hypothesized difference is zero again our significance is 0 0.01 we got to select our ranges again for sample one click on that little button select those ranges insert it click on that button select those ranges insert it we want a two-tail test um, I'm going to go ahead and get confidence interval 99% since our alpha is 0 0.01 just for the heck of it and it will output it on a new page I'm going to click OK all right and we get this output which is uh, quite nifty stuff in blue is the stuff you input or is uh, based you know quickly calculated from the input values there and it's similar to what we got with the data analytics white down here are intermediate values uh, there's our standard error that we would use to calculate our our uh, confidence intervals but we already have those our test statistic again is minus 0.2295 which is the same as we got with the data analytics package our lower and upper critical values are the same p-value is the same because this doesn't fall in the rejection region on the low side or the high side we fail to reject and because the p-value is greater than the alpha we fail to reject that gives us the answer do not reject the null hypothesis so the same answer is pretty quick let's go back at our problem for a minute and look down here at the very bottom um, we know uh, the, the numbers tell us that we fail to reject the null hypothesis now we need to interpret that decision in the context of the original claim the claim remember was the alternative that it does make a difference 
but we would say at the 1%, 0.01 alpha, there is not enough evidence to support the claim because we failed to reject the null. Okay, hope that helps.